Hey, what's going on, people? My name is Terrell Andretti, and I'm the Narc's nemesis. For those of y'all that are watching me on YouTube, y'all make sure y'all like, y'all comment, and subscribe so YouTube's algorithm can pick up this content and push it out, and other people can receive it. If y'all notice me talking funny in this video, it's because for those of y'all that don't know, I broke my jaw probably like 15 years ago. And right now I got a pinched nerve in it. So it's kind of causing me to talk a little weird, like Kanye West or whatever. But still gonna do this video and I am gonna get it taken care of. I gotta make an appointment and do all that stuff. So we're gonna see what's going on. It's killing me. But I'm still gonna bring this message to y'all. Um, today what we're gonna talk about is proper steps proper tactics to healing from you know this abuse and this cycle um what you want to do because we can we can talk no contact all day that's the easy hard part going no contact but a lot of people are like what do you do once you go no contact and pretty much, once you go no contact, I always tell people, if you have any hobbies that you were doing before you met the narcissist, because a lot of why we ruminate about them so much is because we have time on our hands, because we get stuck in the whole depression, we get stuck in the whole emotion, it's, and um you know we get stuck in the whole situation and it's normal and it's okay because you're gonna have a time where you gotta kind of grieve and i always tell people grieve cry talk like don't hold this shit in even if you talk to yourself i don't care like do what you have to do to get these emotions out that's why I always preach go to the gym because when you're holding that stuff in, you're not sending that energy out and you're not transferring it into anything. So you need to, I advise going to the gym because instead of holding that energy in, remember energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred and you're holding a lot of negative energy in. So what you want to do is find ways to transfer that energy out of you the negative energy and the gym is a great way to do that because I always see the gym as a a representation of pushing somebody pushing something you're pushing that energy out of you whether you're running lifting karate uh taekwondo whatever you go in there and do do something get active if you can't you ain't got to go in there and train for wrestlemania and get ready to face the undertaker at SummerSlam. you ain't got to do all that but go in there and get active go break a sweat go put your headphones in listen to your favorite music get in the groove get working out get moving get some of that energy out because one thing that's gonna do is tire you out. You're gonna be too tired to be sitting in that damn chair in the corner, smoking cool 100s and thinking about the damn narcissist. You're gonna be ready to eat something and you're gonna be ready to go to sleep. And hopefully you'll be ready to repeat the same cycle the next day or at least every other day. So the gym is one thing. And a lot of things too, I was just talking to a, um, a client in a one-on-one -on -one session I told them one of the biggest things that helped me is and it might not make sense at first but just follow me real quick what you need to do is separate the hurt the betrayal the feelings and the emotions you need to separate it from them. 
And what I mean by that is take away their ownership. And it's kind of hard to explain, but like I said, bear with me. Because a lot of times we stay stuck in these emotions and stuck ruminating because we want them to apologize so bad. We want them to admit so bad that they did us wrong. We want them to acknowledge our feelings so bad. We give them ownership of that pain. And by giving them ownership of that pain and they're not taking account, because we all know they don't take accountability. They only say they're sorry if it's going to benefit them in their line when they do anyway. So you're expecting an apology. You're expecting reconciliation from someone who's not even capable of giving it to you. So what you have to understand and you have to come to a conclusion they're not going to apologize to you and if they are they're not really sorry um they're not going to acknowledge how badly they did you they're not going to uh confess fess up they're not going to be like hey i fucked up i'm sorry whatever they're not going to do that You have to be at peace knowing that. Because if you're not able to accept that, what you're going to do, you're giving them ownership of your pain. And when you can make that click in your mind that, hey, I know this person ain't going to apologize, but I can't let that hold back my healing either. I'm apologizing to myself for letting myself down. I'm apologizing to myself for not having boundaries. I'm apologizing to myself for not checking this person sooner than I should have. And what you're doing is you're taking ownership and accountability for your feelings in your pain by doing that you're subconsciously releasing them from your pain and ownership over it because if you give yourself ownership of it you're able to give yourself healing did you get that if you give yourself ownership of your pain you're able to give yourself healing. It's like if you buy a house, you're able to go unlock that front door versus you buy them a house. You go to the front door, you can't get in because they won't let you in because they have ownership of it. Do you follow? By doing this, you are taking ownership of your life and you're taking ownership of your healing. You're releasing them back to whatever domain they belong to, whatever hell hole they crawled out of, whatever fucking supplies bed they're finna crawl into. You're releasing them. You might hold on to the thoughts and the memories and that's fine. But they're under your control now not theirs because if you give them control they'll never give you clarity they'll never own up to anything they've done and by them not doing that they're gonna stay up here and of course you'll think of them from time to time but they'll have ownership up here if you don't release them and you won't be able to move forward deal with the emotions without them. Release them, let them go, do whatever the fuck they wanna do. You focus, you take ownership, you go to therapy, you go to the gym, you go make the, do the necessary shadow work within yourself 
so you won't fall victim to this thing again. And a lot of y'all are probably like, well, ain't that letting them get away with murder? Hell no, nah, they ain't getting away with nothing. Because, first of all, by you doing the work, you're going to become a better version of yourself that they can't have access to. If you're doing the work, you're going to become a better version of yourself that they can't have access to. You're going to look better. You're going to smell better. You're going to feel better. You're going to make more money. You're going to attract better people. While they're going off and they're stuck in the same cycle because it never ends. The people just change. The cycle never ends. A lot of people ask me, well, what if it's this person? What if they go to this person? What if they get married? What if they buy a house? What if they do this? What if they win the Royal Rumble? What if they do all? It don't matter. They might sprinkle a little, uh, a few different little, you know, surprises in there. Okay, they had a baby. Okay, this and this. That don't fucking change them. All it is is another obstacle. All it is is another form of supply. Because they going to probably end up discarding the kid too. They going to probably end up um, divorced. They probably going to end up having to move out of the house that they bought with this person. Because their ways don't change. Their lies do. Their people that they lie to change. So y'all are thinking they're going off. Man, look here. You can't, you can't go and prosper anywhere else if you haven't done the work where you once failed. With you, they failed. They mishandled a genuine person. They cheated on a genuine person. They lied on a genuine person. Their soul is dirty. So you think they're going to take all this karma and you think they finna go to a new situation and prosper just because of some shit you seen online. A lot of y'all believe in the internet too much. Well, I seen it on Facebook. It got to be true. Well, I seen it on Instagram. It got to be true. Motherfuckers lie on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. They lie every goddamn day. You got to think the narcissist has been lying to you since they met you. So you think they finna go to another situation and automatically tell the truth. You've been with them 10 years, 10 months, 10 days, however long you've been with them. And you think they finna just go to the next relationship and change their ways. True change comes with work. You can go lie like you done changed overnight. You can go do that. But true change comes with work, hard work, work you really don't want to fucking do because it requires you looking in the fucking mirror. So you think they finna leave you probably the best thing that ever happened to them and they finna go over here with this idiot and a half and just prosper because of some shit you seen on Facebook or whatever. Nah, I don't work like that. What's one plus one? Two jackasses. Don't be one of them. You gotta understand, they putting on a show 24 seven. They not doing no real work. They not going to therapy. They're not changing. That's the advantage you have over them. You're able to do this. You're able to recognize, hey, this is wrong with me. And it doesn't bother me that it's wrong with me, but I want to fix it. That's a superpower. They don't have that. That's why they hate you. That's true revenge. True revenge is getting your shit together and leaving motherfuckers behind and not having, not letting them have access to you once you get your shit together. Because when you was trying to get your shit together with them, they ain't fucking believe in you. 
When you was trying to get your shit together with them, they was cheating on you. When you was trying to get your shit together with them, they was fucking lying to you. When they, when you were trying to love them, motherfuckers wouldn't even give you a fucking hug. Imagine having to beg somebody, somebody for a fucking hug. Imagine having to beg somebody for a fucking kiss. Imagine to having to beg somebody to act like you're a fucking human being. You're better than that. Because true love, true affection is effortless. And I'm not going to say true love is effortless because you have to work. But if somebody's into you, you got to beg them for that shit. You're going to have to try to push them the fuck off you. It's like, damn, okay, I got you. But you have to beg for the bare minimum from this motherfucker. That should be motivation right there to heal and become fucking immortal. After you get them the fuck out your life, whether they left you or you left them, they're not worth sticking around. They're not worth, oh, it's for the kids, it's for the kids. One thing I learned, because I'm not with my daughter's mom, we cool now. She's not the North, by the way. You might try to stay and make it work for the kids, but my thing is if you're an unhappy parent, if you're an unhappy person, you cannot effectively be a good parent. So if you're in a toxic environment where you're unhappy, how can you how can you be a parent to the best of your abilities? No, it might hurt. But you need to remove yourself from that toxic environment. Work on yourself and focus on your kids. I know y'all have been begging me to do a video about narcissistic parents. I will. I got you. But the main thing you need to do regarding that, focus only on the kid, not your feelings. Don't talk to them about no fucking relationship, what happened, none of that. Only the kid. Anything else doesn't matter but anyway that's those are some steps like really take ownership of your pain take ownership of your situation take ownership of what happened do what they can't do take accountability it doesn't make you any less than a man or a woman it actually makes you strong being able to say, man, I fucked up on my part, but I want to fix it and I want to do better. That makes you a better person. That makes you a healthier person. That makes you better than them. It ain't about being better than nobody. It's about overcoming this shit in the best way possible. And the best way is to release them. My ex Nort, I'm not mad at her anymore. Does the betrayal still bother me? Hell yeah, because it hurt. But she's not attached to it anymore. I deal with that on its own. She's just the person that did it. But she's released into the world. She can go do whatever she want to do. And I don't have anything to do with that. So why would she have anything to do with me healing myself? She wasn't in the gym with me for three hours a day. She wasn't with me writing them songs. None of that. I took ownership of that. I created that. You got to do the same thing. And it, like I say, I always say this. It's easier said than done. But it's necessary. and It needs to be done. And you might not see a way right now because it's dark and you're hurt. And I know because I've been there. And what you got to do is give yourself time. There's no timetable uh, for healing from this shit. It's not. I discarded my ex-nart. 
Halloween 2021. And like I said, y'all can watch my videos and y'all can see the difference in fucking healing. And you know, you can see it in my face, the progress, you can see it in my eyes, you can tell in my mannerisms. It takes time. This shit ain't overnight. It takes work. It takes a lot of self-realization. It takes looking in that mirror. It takes accountability. It takes shadow work. And some nights you're gonna have to fight because it's gonna get rough. I'm 6'4", 305 pounds. And that shit brought me down to my fucking knees. But I didn't stay there. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be depressed. It's okay to be hurt. Cry that shit out. Get you some tissue. Dry your eyes. You get back up. And you look, you look that shit square in the fucking eyes. And you tell that pain, you hit like a bitch. And you keep pushing through. And you keep whatever you pray to, whoever you pray to, you keep them on the horn. Because you can't do it by yourself. You alone are not strong enough to do this shit by yourself. You're going to need them. Every ounce of any God that you believe in, you're going to need them. Because you can't do this by yourself. I didn't do this by myself. The only way I got through this was God. Because I didn't see a way out of it. Now, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm super religious because I'm not. But I believe in God and we got our relationship and I talk to him every day. And as y'all can see, I curse like I said, I actually curse more than this, but I'm trying to keep it a little PG-13. But if y'all heard the stories, your cursing friend is your most honest friend. But anyway, get prayed up, getting the books Learn as much as you can about this shit so you can fight it. The more you know about something, the less surprising it is. The more effective you can be combating it. Some of y'all might feel like y'all are being obsessive over this shit because, man, I watch Narcissus video all day and night. Who gives a damn? Watch as many videos as you need to. Because... You're not obsessed with them. You're obsessed with trying to figure out what the fuck happened. And you deserve answers. All of them. Every answer to every fucking question you got, you deserve it. But you ain't gonna get nothing worth nothing from them. Don't seek no answers from them. The answers you seek in here and up there. They ain't got no answers for you. All they got is more manipulation, more hurt, more broken promises, more future faking, more gaslighting, more fucking lying. That's all you're going to ever get from them. And false hope. So you make sure that you're giving yourself the answers you deserve. You make sure you're putting in the work. You make sure you're putting in the time. Go do something nice for yourself if you can. I don't care if it's going to sit in the park by yourself and just, you know, vibing out. I don't care if it's listening to your favorite song loud as hell in the car, singing it. Do something nice for yourself other than thinking about them fucking idiots. But 
like I said, I appreciate all the birthday wishes. I, the the love is is crazy. I definitely appreciate it. Um, to those of y'all that share the same birthday as me, happy birthday. For those of y'all that got birthdays coming up, happy birthday. You know, queer is gay. But um, I want to thank all of y'all for the happy birthdays from all over the world. It's greatly appreciated. Um, all the donations, I appreciate them. If you need a session, the link is in the description. If y'all want to hear some of my music, link in the description. Y'all want merchandise, link in the description. Make sure y'all are checking the description because a lot of the stuff that y'all are asking for is in the description. Um, thank y'all for the support. We almost at 15,000 subscribers. I never seen myself doing this. Never. I just picked up the camera one day and started talking, and y'all have made it worthwhile. Um, I never thought I'd find anything that I love more than, or just as much as music, but I love coming on here telling y'all my old stories. Love giving y'all my point of view, and I love the fact that y'all are receiving it and y'all appreciate it. Because um, this shit is real. And I'm pretty sure y'all can agree with that. So um, thank y'all again. I love you guys. New subscribers, welcome to the family. Old subscribers, welcome back. Um, and like I say, another day, another way. You ain't got to listen. I know you heard me.